Good morning. I have a question for you. When was the last time that you wrote a letter? I've been asking a lot of people that question lately and getting a lot of blank stares. We've just undergone a paradigm shift in regard to written communication. Up through the 1990s, we primarily communicated through written, handwritten, physical letters. Now we do it by email, text messages, or social media platforms. There's been this radical shift in how we communicate. The word that we translate as letter in the New Testament in our English Bibles is epistolae in the Greek. Prior to the time of the New Testament, this word referred to any form of written communication or communication that was sent via a messenger, written or verbal. But by the time the New Testament comes along, this had been narrowed down primarily to written communication sent by a messenger, a letter. Now, as I mentioned in the video on how did they write the New Testament, letters were very important and special. Most people did not receive them during their lifetime. It was for important or significant people. And letters were considered very, very valuable. In the movie Gladiator, you have these scenes where the main character, Maximus, has been keeping letters from his dead wife with him. He takes them out and sets them up with little idols of his family in his cell. It was his way not just to remember his wife, but also to create a sense of presence with her. While this scene was crafted for the movie, I think it illustrates just how precious letters were during that day. Now, before we go any further, we need to grab a cup of coffee because you're watching the Caffeinated Bible. My name is David Paris, and the goal of this channel is to take what I've been teaching and writing and researching in seminaries and other graduate institutions for the past 20 plus years and bring them to you on YouTube. So if you like this material, be sure to subscribe, share it with your friends. It's the best way I know to let other people know about the channel and make sure you grab a cup of coffee. Well, look what came in the mail while I was up making coffee. I know what it is, but we're gonna have to wait for then for me to open this, because I've got a lot to cover. Where was I? Oh yes. Almost a hundred years ago to this day, in 1922, Adolf Deisman published his major study, Light from the Ancient East. This was a groundbreaking work. He demonstrated how the study of Greco-Roman letters non-literary texts help us to understand the New Testament much better. At the same time, his work has been advanced and improved upon since then. One example of how his work has been advanced is what we know about letters in the New Testament. Deisman argued that the letters in the New Testament, especially Paul's, were too polished. And he put forward this idea that letters were the daily person-to-person -person types of correspondence between individuals. Like the woman up at Vindolanda along Hadrian's Wall, how she was inviting friends to a birthday party. Epistles, on the other hand, according to Deisman, were more literary and were written for a group, not an individual. So, he argued, Paul's letters should be seen as high literature rather than common letters, according to Deisman. Recent studies have really broken down this distinction. 
Now most don't see a distinction between letters and epistles. These two categories are very flexible and basically mean the same thing. Epistles or letters cover a wide range. They can be informal letters between families and friends to carefully crafted literary works. And the letters in the New Testament display this range as well. In the last video, I covered how you would employ a scribe when writing a letter. I'm not going to cover that ground again, but a good scribe would make sure that the author's words were not only grammatically correct and sound, but that they followed the correct conventions regarding a letter. So let's take a look at the structure of letters during the first century, because the format and structure of letters during Paul's day is very different from how we write a letter today. So in order to help illustrate this, I brought in a scribe to compose a letter. Okay, are you ready? Dear Sweet Tonius, you lousy kilt, you owe me five denarii and I'll get my pound of flesh if you don't cough it up. Okay, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second here. Did you hire me to help you write a letter or just jot down some swill that you're coughing up out of your mind? What? Yeah, I've got a suggestion. This is what I would write. I, Chris, okay, I like that opening. Your friend and business partner to Suetonius, you say. My coworker and friend. If you are well, all is well, and I am also well. I hope and pray to the gods that you are in good health and that Zeus is looking after you and your family. I pray that you remember all the great times we had together drinking and pillaging when we were in the army. I want to remind you of our business dealings and hope to continue them in the future. If possible, could you please send the five denarii I lent you in good faith with Titus who bore this letter to you. Greet Decimus, my uncle, the magistrate who lives in your town. I have sent him my greetings as well. <laughs> I bet you that really gets me. Yeah, that's why I put it in. I, Quintus, your business partner, write to you with my own hand and you'll fill this in here. Servius, our friend, sends his greetings as well. All right, all right, sounds good. So you'll write that up and then we can send it to him. Great. It's always good to have a scribe to make sure that you're doing this the proper way. In the New Testament, we have 21 letters. They're written primarily from Paul but they range from one individual to another, or from one individual to a group, or from one individual to a group of groups. And it's worth remembering that the purpose of a letter is to convey a sense of presence of the author or the person sending the letter to that other person or that group. A letter serves to fictionalize the physical presence of the sender to the readers. Oftentimes you will see this mentioned specifically in Greco-Roman letters, and the same holds true in Paul's letters. For example, in 1 Corinthians 5.3, he writes, Though I am absent in body, I am with you in spirit. So even though Paul is physically distant and separated from them, he wants them to have this sense that he is present with them through the reading and the writing of this letter. So how are the New Testament letters different from our letters? Well, let's start with the opening. When we open our letters, we like to write, Dear so-and-so, and we address the person that we are writing to. In the Greco-Roman world, they did just the opposite. They opened by mentioning themselves first. Notice that so many times in the New Testament letters, the person writing, I, Paul, an apostle, or I, John, they all mention themselves first. Now the first line or two in a Greco-Roman letter was called the prescript. And it would open with a simple formula of A to B, from the writer to the reader. For example, in 1 Thessalonians, we have Paul to the Thessalonians. Oftentimes this prescript would just be the person's name, but sometimes they might elaborate a little bit more. I, Suetonius, your beloved son, for example. And then they would mention who the letter is being written to, and they might include a little bit about that person as well. I, Suetonius, your beloved son, write to my dear father. 
The next element in the prescript is what is called the greeting or the kyrene. Cairo, the verb that this is derived from, usually means to rejoice or be glad. But in the opening lines, it conveys this idea of be greeted or feel greeted. Now notice how instead of kyrene, be greeted, Paul then uses the Greek noun kairis, which means grace. The two words sound very, very similar. And by exchanging kyrene for kairis, Paul takes the standard letter writing practices and greeting and baptizes them with his theology. In 1 Thessalonians 1.1, Paul just mentions his name and his two partners, Silvanius and Timothy. The church, or who's being addressed here, is just simply mentioned as the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 and 2 Thessalonians are probably the two first letters that we have that Paul wrote in the New Testament. In subsequent letters, he will develop this prescript more. For example, compare the prescript here in 1 and 2 Thessalonians with the letter to the Romans, which Paul is going to write many years later. And we're going to see that in the prescript there, his self-description is six verses long. He has really extended his prescript. And we see how Paul, in his ministry of letter writing, hones his skills and his craft as a letter writer. You have to excuse me. Once again, we're getting all this smoke from the wildfires and it just really, really affects my voice. It makes it very rough and raspy and I cough a lot. So please excuse me if my voice sounds a little rough today. In most of his letters after 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Paul's going to expand his identification in the prescript as Paul the Apostle or Paul the Servant of God. After the prescript, we run into a section that's called the proing, and this falls between the prescript and the main body of the letter. In Greco-Roman letters, there was a very popular line that was used in the proing: If you are well, it is well, and I am also well. Si vales, bene est, ego valeo. In Greco-Roman times, this si vales, bene est, ego valeo was abbreviated in many letters as S, V, B, E, E, V. Now the proem was the section of the letter where the ancient authors would often fish for goodwill. They would do this by praising or flattering the person that they are sending the letter to, to put them in a good mood for receiving the message of the letter. Oftentimes, the author would mention that they are praying for that person that they are sending the letter to. This is a feature of ancient letters that fits hand in glove with the needs of the New Testament authors when they wrote to their churches. So you will see in most of the New Testament letters in this proem section how the author will specifically mention how they are praying for that congregation or individual in their prayers. The next section that we need to consider, and I'm not going to go into a great deal right now, is the longest part of the letter, and this was the main body of the letter. This can range from a few lines to several pages long. In Romans, you have the introduction in the first, let's say, 10 or 12 verses, the proem and the prescript, and then the main body of the letter runs 14 and a half chapters all the way up to the beginning of chapter 16. Now, one of the accepted practices in the main body of the letter was to quote proverbs or other material that was known between the author and the sender. This commonly shared material would establish a bond between the author and the reader. It's like both of them know this and both of them are reading it at the same time. And the authors of the New Testament follow this practice as well. Their letters are peppered with proverbs, quotes from the Old Testament, hymns that were sung in the churches, and early creedal formulations that Paul quoted and other authors to establish this common ground with his readers. In the final lines, you would have the closing or the postscript. Now, a common element in Greco-Roman letters in the postscript was, I pray that you are well or I pray that you are prospering or that you are successful. This was the second section in letters where personal greetings and prayers were communicated from the person sending the letter to the reader. 
Greetings were also extended in the closing section. We tend to put these at the very beginning of the letters. In Greek and Roman letters, they stuck this at the very end in the postscript. So you would get this, I greet you, the person writing it to the person reading it. Greet so-and-so for me. So-and-so send their greetings. The author would then convey greetings from somebody else who didn't have the time or the money to send their greetings in that letter as well. Now, in the New Testament, perhaps the two best classical letters, they follow sort of all the rules, are 2nd and 3rd John. But also in Acts 15, 23 through 29, and 23, 26 through 30, we have two letters embedded within the book of Acts. So let's just take a quick look at 1 Corinthians and the opening of 1 Corinthians to see how these ancient letter writing conventions function in within this letter. In verses 1 and 2 of 1 Corinthians, Paul opens with a typical Greco-Roman letter opening, which is termed the prescript. Just like other Greco-Roman letters, this contains several parts. First, the sender identifies themselves. In this case, Paul and Sosthenes, probably his scribe. Then he mentions who this letter is being addressed to, the church at Corinth. And finally, a salutation of greeting is given grace and peace, where I said, for example, instead of Kyrene, Paul changes it to Kyris, grace. In verses four through nine, now we have the proem. The purpose of the proem was, as I mentioned above, to establish goodwill between the writer and the reader. And it usually, as I said, conveyed a wish for the well-being of the person that they were writing to and a prayer for them. So look at how Paul does this. In verse four, he says, I thank my God always for you because of the grace, charis, that was given to you. And then this prayer, that in every way you are enriched in him in all speech and knowledge. And then he continues on, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed within you, that you are not lacking any gift and then in verse 8, we have this prayer that Christ will sustain you to the very end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now notice how in verse 10, the structure of the letter changes. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, dot, dot, dot. Now we are into the main body of the letter, and Paul is getting to why he actually wrote. We had the prescript, the first three verses, the proem where he is fishing for goodwill in verses four through nine, and then in verse 10, we drop into the main body of the letter. A fun exercise to help you be able to read the New Testament letters better is to take one of the epistles and read through it and mark it up as you do to see how many of these features of ancient letters you can recognize. See if you can identify the prescript and where it shifts to the proem and then when the proem ends, into the main by the letter. And then finally the postscript, where you get the ending or the conclusion of the letter. Also look for proverbs, creedal statements, quotes from the Old Testament, or maybe hymns. Shared material that the author and the reader would both know that establish this common bond between them. I'd suggest that you start with maybe 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Philemon, or 2nd and 3rd John. These tend to have all the features of ancient letters, and they're short enough that you can work on them rather quickly. Hopefully, by doing this little exercise, it'll help you to see how the conventions used in Greco-Roman letters in regard to writing their letters were then picked up and adapted within the New Testament. How they then saturated these features with their theology. And finally, hopefully help you to see the humanness of communication between the authors of these letters and the readers of these epistles. Ah, uh, yes, I almost forgot what the mailman brought. So let's open this up and see what we've got here. And there we have it. How to make papyrus, my little kit. I'm probably gonna have to do a video on this because this looks pretty cool and incorporate my grandchildren in this as well. So until next week, I hope you have a great week. Remember to subscribe, let other people know about it. Give it a thumbs up, YouTube really likes that. And if you have any questions or observations from when you study one of the epistles on your own, please leave them in the comments down below this video. 
I really do like to read those. Until next week, peace.